As we have known for some time now, the 2020 Giro d'Italia will start in Hungary with a prologue in Budapest. This stage is pulled straight from the 2019 event, however, the climb isn't as difficult. Two Hungarian flat stages follow before a hilariously long transfer into Sicily. There's an immediate hilltop finish on stage 4 with a 4km climb up to Agrigento, albeit at only 4.6%. Things get even more serious on stage 5 with a summit finish on Mount Etna. The stage is around 150 kilometers long and has a series of rollers before the main event. Stage 6 is a sprint or no sprint affair, absolutely panned flat apart from the 12.4 kilometer climb and descent right in the middle of the stage. It will mean the brake may be let go and the sprinters may not be able to hang on. The following day there is also a dilemma for the peloton. Another hilly day with a nearly hilltop finish and over 220 kilometers, This stage is very similar to stage 6 of last year's event and could be another for the break. Stage 8 is absolutely flat with not a single climb on the route and stage 9 offers a couple more climbs but this should still be a sprinter's day. Drawing similarities to stage 3 of this year's Tour de France, stage 10 has a few climbs but they are incredibly steep and all 5 come within the final 50 kilometers. It will be interesting to see if the favourites have a dig on this stage. Stage 11 should be a sprint in towards Romini before another hilly day with five categorised climbs and much more uncategorised climbing. It could be a day for the break though because it's a flat finish. Two late hills on stage 13 could upset the sprinters but it's unlikely that an overall contender will hit out for glory here given the staggering difficulty of the final week. Race Stage 14 the race of truth. 34 kilometers rolling time trial will really shuffle the order ready for a dramatic and action-packed final week. Finally, the next summit finish comes on stage 15. The favourites will have been waiting around for this since Etna, and the fi- final 15 kilometer climb will leave nowhere to hide. Hilly day for stage 16 should be a day for the KOM seekers as there are six categorized climbs and a flat finish. Another hard day follows. Four mountain peaks, the hardest of them coming first at just 40 kilometers into the stage. It's not the steepest summit finish with a maximum gradient of only 9%, but for those looking to gain time, it'll have to be raced from very far out. Incredible day on stage 18. Long climb right out of the gate and then later in the stage of the Stelvio, followed by a quick descent and another, and another summit finish. Even with all this difficulty, we haven't even reached the Queen stage yet but it may find out people who haven't left enough in the tank. Final chance for the sprinters on stage 19 with no climbs on the route. Good job, because the next day is the queen stage. Stage 20 will bring a dramatic conclusion to the mountains, taking the riders over 2,000 metres three times. It will be 200 kilometres long and have 5,000 metres of climbing, and cross the Col de Isarad, which returns after a 13 year absence. That, including two other mountain peaks, is all for a huge mountain finish on the Sestriere where Chris Froome launched his famous Giro winning move in 2018. Final stage and third time trial of the race, but at only 16 kilometers around the Ma- Milan, there won't be too much shuffling of the order. However, if it's close, it could come down to the very last pedal stroke. A very nice route for the Giro this year, with super hard mountain stages in the final week. It's just unfortunate that between stages 5 and 15, the favourites may be inclined to sit in the bunch waiting for this final week. Let's hope they don't race it too negatively and race the Giro from the gun, rather than sitting around and waiting for the final week. Thank you very much for watching this Giro preview. I hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.